فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brothers, my sisters, I hope everyone is doing well this morning uh, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah It's a beautiful day here in Africa, in Zimbabwe and I'm sure it's a lovely day in most places. Unfortunately, Europe is having a lot of snow, subhanAllah. And my family up uh, in the UK have been uh, keeping me posted with what's going on there uh, in terms of weather. So may Allah make it easy for everyone while some enjoy the cold, you know, when it gets a little bit too much, it becomes uh, not so enjoyable. Uh, my brothers, my sisters, uh, I really want to uh, pray that Allah Almighty grant ease to those who are struggling and suffering in Ghota. Uh, I have uh, done uh, uh, whatever I, I, I can and could, and I'm still continuing to do whatever I can. Just a quick note, don't think that people have to do what you think they should be doing in order to try and help those who are suffering. They can do whatever they feel is within their capacity or is beneficial. So I recall someone sending a message saying, uh, the whole world should read Ayatul Kursi five times each and that will resolve the matter uh, of uh, the Syrians, for example. And uh, while it is important to make dua and to read Quran, but to come up with these things where we think that the entire solution will be found just by doing something we've created and made up on our own without it being revealed or from Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is actually a mistake. So while it is important to uh, make dua, to read Quran, to ask Allah's forgiveness and, uh, and so on, uh, we should understand, like I said, don't think that the solution is what you have decided it will be. So people then ask me, when have you ever spoken about it? Well, if they haven't heard, it doesn't make me guilty. Uh, they say, why haven't you put your voice uh, on this? Well, perhaps I have, but in a way that might be even more effective than just plastering it all over the social media. I remember hearing one of the young motivational speakers from Sri Lanka by the name of uh, Omar Yusuf, and he says that, you know, uh, people have already put so much all over uh, the internet and how did that help you know how did that help okay that was his opinion but it's worth thinking about what he's just said that sometimes we make a bigger noise than actually solving the problem and people say no we should be making a noise well that's your opinion isn't it uh, it's no revelation to say that you have to post it on Twitter or Facebook and guess what it is there but because you haven't seen it so you start thinking this guy hasn't done that or this person hasn't done that it's a little bit of, of a sickness, I think. So I, I think from a financial perspective, I've done whatever I could. From a political perspective, I, I've still, I'm still doing whatever I can. Uh, from a awareness perspective, I am doing what I think I should or I could. And uh, we're still trying to help. And it, it hasn't solved the problem. But inshallah, we will just feel a little bit better that we tried to do something. Because to be honest, we feel very let down by a lot of the politicians sometimes because we feel they are the ones who can actually stop the fighting and the killing and they're not doing it. So we feel frustrated, we feel very let down. And then there are some people who try and take the law into their own hands wanting to help but they make the matter worse. And this is actually a disaster. So uh, it's very, very interesting. Oh, I just noticed something. See, there's a Bahur stand behind me. Can you see the Bahur stand there? And guess what? All the love hearts look like it's the Bahur going up. Subhanallah. Mashallah. <laughs> it's something I just noticed. I, I, I wish that there could be a scent to all these love hearts and we could probably smell it. I, I heard that it's actually going to be possible soon uh, where your phone will let off a scent depending on what uh, a reaction the people have. Well, I hope it doesn't let off a stench if the people are upset. Uh, but anyway, that's a good one. So I just noticed this uh, to my, th there goes, there's my fingers there. Just there, there is a stand, a bakhul stand in, in the background. So you can see these love hearts going up and they're just going into the air. The unfortunate thing is they're going actually from the bottom of, uh, they're going from the bottom of the bakhul stand rather than from the top. But it's okay, that's technology, right? <laughs> um, a quick one. Today, I wanted to mention something very interesting and that is, uh, one point of irritation that I have is when someone asks too many personal questions. My friends, those who I'm close to, they know that this guy doesn't ask too many questions. 
mm, I would not like to, unless I'm very close to you and there's a need to know, I wouldn't like to ask you, where do you work? What do you do? How much do you get paid? And, you know, who do you work with? And how, what time do you go to work? And what do you wear when you go to work? And, you know, who works with you? And what time do you come back? And how do you come back? And how much petrol do you use when you go? Or how much money do you spend on transport? And, and, and how do you eat? And where do you eat? And how much do you eat? And how, what do you pay for the food? And how does it taste? And so on. Those type of questions actually chase people away. Uh, you know, uh, in the Indo-Pak languages, they call it panchat, you know, <laughs> where you're not supposed to be asking all personal questions. Like someone asked me, oh, I heard you're going to Indonesia. And I said, yes, inshallah, maybe in September. Well, where are you going? And I said, I don't know. And when are you, where exactly are you going to be staying? For example, it's just an example, right? So I don't know. And also, but are you going? I said, yeah, but I'm going. I'm planning to go, inshallah. Everything is in the pipeline. But the details of it, I don't know because we have not yet crossed that bridge. So if you're going to ask me too many questions, number one is I don't have the time for it in my case. But number two is why ask personal questions? You know, you will get to know when the time comes. It's still far away. Uh, you know, you don't need to know every single detail of everyone's life. So uh, let's try and be very, very considerate when asking questions. I, for one, get very, very uh, irritated when someone asks too many questions. Uh, you can let me know how many of you get irritated when someone starts asking so many questions, you know. Oh, did you bath this morning? Oh, how was the water? Was it hot? Oh, uh, are you guys, don't you have a shortage of water? How much water did you use? Hey, relax, I didn't use your water and it's okay. You'd rather say, wow, there's a shortage of water I heard. And, you know, I, I hope the people who are actually using water save water. That's probably a good comment. But to come and start saying, mm, you know, all these things and asking so many questions that really are irrelevant. They have nothing to do with you or, or I. Uh, like they say, the price of eggs in China. Subhanallah. That was what we heard when we were kids. But um, indeed, indeed. Uh, someone asks, oh, so you've got this. So how, did it, how much did it cost? And where did you get it done? And how much was it? And what, what? Hey, take it easy. How close are you to the person? If it's a really good friend and you need it done, you might want to ask them details. But otherwise, it's okay. You know, just take it easy. MashaAllah tabarakallah. So my brothers and sisters, that was a little message I thought I'd deliver today and I'd uh, probably, you know, catch up with you once again. Uh, secondly, um, my brothers and sisters, how many of you saw the video that I posted of the school for the mute to learn the Quran and they actually have the Alif and Ba and they're reading the Quran. You know how long that takes just to, to, to have one verse of the Quran takes them quite a while because they've got to, you know, do all their things. And it's amazing how uh, they actually speak, you know, and imagine I'm doing this and I don't even know what it actually means, but I'm just playing with my fingers because it's just like, you know, speaking and, you know, I wonder what that means as well. But it's amazing how, how much of effort they're putting in learning the Quran and they have halaqat and all these groups. And what do we do? Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can actually go back to my uh, Instagram post, the last one. It was a very, very good post, actually, because it's motivating for us. Um, it's something amazing. So my brothers and sisters, uh, the reason I put it there was just to motivate us to pray for these kids and uh, to show you that each one of us has some form of, I don't want to call it a disability, but disadvantage sometimes. And uh, we try to, or we become bogged down and depressed due to the disadvantage we're in. It could be any form of disadvantage. Don't make the most of the situation, you, you, the situation you're in and do your best. And I promise you, you will actually succeed. You'll actually do better than the people who have uh, less disadvantages than you. And we have seen this. I mean, I've come across people who don't have hands. And the amount of work they do is tremendous with their legs and with their mouths. It's amazing. And then I have people who are totally able like myself and yourselves. And, you know, subhanAllah, it's just uh, shocking how, how, how uh, disgruntled we become. There is someone, uh, Western, Southwestern, I think, uh, saying hello to us, uh, saying I'm not a Muslim, but hello. Well, hello back to you, mashallah. I hope you have a good day. Um, so, <sighs> Yeah, that was a little message I had to you to say, don't lose hope, don't become, uh, don't become, uh, <laughs> don't become despondent. I just laughed because someone said donkey. Now, donkey in Afrikaans actually means thank you. The first time I heard it many years ago, and someone said donkey, and I, I said, I'm not a donkey. 
you know, and then they said, no, donkey manure, you know, and I thought, oh, wow, uh, the donkey's manure, I wonder who uses that. I think I spoke about it in one of my talks some time back. It was actually a big laugh. But anyway, mashallah, good one. Um, the brothers who are asking, uh, oh, wow, there's uh, da Darag, Darag 768. Uh, I was waiting for that. I actually now enjoy people who, uh, who use low terms because I can remind them not to do that because it says more about them than us. Everyone knows the drill, right? Hello, guy who is a little bit of a hater. Wow, the words you've used mean more about you or say more about you than it does about me because I'm not a hater, number one. And number two is uh, we don't use such low language. Wow. So if you notice, we use good language, mashallah. There is another one, mashallah. Uh, I'm going to say the names because, you know, it's called name and shame, right? So it's Baha, Baha Dol, someone, uh, wow, don't use those words. They don't suit your face, you know. Some of us have a face that doesn't suit a bad word, you know. So if, if you see such a lovely face, you wouldn't expect huge F's and B's and Z's and H's to actually come out in the X word these days, to come out of your mouth. No, it doesn't suit your face. Wow, there's someone else there as well, subhanAllah. So uh, just take it easy, guys. You know, there is another one, mashallah. He's called Padere. You know, uh, that is not a good meaning in, 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 in Gujarati. So uh, it's okay. You know, we don't. <laughs> I enjoy this. In fact, you know, I, I did not go on the cruise uh, that left from Singapore. And uh, yesterday I saw an article written by some people about how, uh, how uh, dangerous a shaitan I am because of go the cruise. And I'm thinking, hang on, guy, I didn't even go on that cruise and I haven't even been on it. And I don't even want to go on it, you know. So this is something strange. And, and I'm thinking, wow, I, I, I wrote them a letter. I wrote them back an email to say, I'm honored. I'm honored to have a person like you belittle me and speak, you know, such uh, or say these words about me. It's actually an honor. Uh, because I consider it an honor. I mean, when cheap people speak about you, you wouldn't expect them to speak about you in a good way. You see, when people whose minds are very, very small, they cater for themselves and the beans that they own in terms of a can of baked beans, then leave them. You know, there might be quite a few baked beans in the tin, but it's inside the tin. For us, we've got to worry about the rest of the globe, you know. So perhaps sometimes they're small-minded. Excuse them. But now when I get uh, something of that nature, I'm actually going to make it a point to send them back a message to say, thank you very much. Keep it up. Spend every day doing this because at least I know you're occupied with me and not with someone else. May Allah forgive us. Okay, that might be a bit sarcastic, but, but still, uh, Indonesia, someone's asking me if I have plans to actually uh, visit. Yes, I do, inshallah, in September sometime. Uh, perhaps you will hear about it by the will of Allah. My next few trips, I'm going to be going, to, inshallah, to Liberia. At the end of March, Liberia, inshallah. And thereafter, I will be going to uh, the Philippines by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Manila, we have a huge event, uh, inshallah, and in the second week of April. So, at Building Bridges, you can find out more about it, inshallah, from my uh, pages by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, I enjoyed this. And I see the hate has actually become less because the people are getting used to the fact that, you know what, it doesn't mean that you differ with someone that you need to hate them. Uh, or you need to speak in a low way. You know, if I differ, my duty is to uh, try and help, to try and engage, to try and put forward my view, listen to their view as well. The same way I have a right to express what I believe is correct, you have a right to express what you believe is correct. But stop using derogatory terms. And unfortunately, some religious people who claim to be followers of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they too use derogatory terms and they think that that is the prophetic way. It's not. It's not the prophetic way. It is something very very, very far from divinity and from being prophetic. So we need to know this. Um, may Allah protect you guys, uh, grant you guys goodness. I think I need to go. The reason is I don't want to keep this session too long. I'd like to post it on YouTube. And anyone who visits my YouTube channel, you will find the uh, posts of these Insta lives by the will of Allah should be there. So uh, inshallah, we'll see you guys there. North Somaliland, may Allah bless you guys. Uh, grant you guys goodness. I haven't been there. I've just flown over there. And every time I fly over there, I, I think I look down and I see the beauty. I can actually see. I've actually taken pictures of, of, the, of the places from the air. And you'll be surprised how clear it is, mashallah. Uh, may Allah bless us all, grant us uh, goodness. Uh, you know, our hearts and, and uh, go out to those in, in, in Syria who are facing bombardment from from. You know, I just wish the politicians could actually stop all this. 
we're human beings, the masses, we don't want to see killing and destruction. And you know what? It's going on. And, and it's very, very, very sad. It's ugly. It's unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable. We do not resolve our matters by killing people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. And really, may he forgive our weakness. And uh, I really feel, you know, so, so uh, deeply for, for all these causes. Uh, and like I said, keep doing whatever, whatever you can in a way that would help the situation. And don't ever do something uh, in a way that would actually make it worse. So some people try to solve a problem by creating bigger problems. That's very bad. You know, I know there is frustration. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I notice I'm actually frowning a bit more, so I'm, I'm actually... <laughs> I remember when I used to frown before, my father used to put his finger on my forehead and say, don't frown because it, you will age very early. But alhamdulillah, you know, one of those things. Uh, I've had a lovely time chatting with you guys. I hope you guys have had a lovely time uh, interacting with me, and thank you so much. When I put this up on YouTube, it will not have the love signs here because I'm going to save this video and post it, inshallah, later on today. May Allah bless you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.